Coming up on today's Locked On Dodgers, the Dodgers win, so do the Giants. A strong bullpen performance in this game and in the second half of the season. And just how are the Giants doing it? That's what we're going to be talking about. So let's get Locked On Dodgers. You are Locked On Dodgers. Your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yo, 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 Dodger fans, welcome to Locked On Dodgers. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, the number one local sports daily podcast network. Locked On, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by Spotify Green Room. Download the app and join us every week to get in on the action. This is a daily podcast covering the World Series champion Los Angeles Dodgers, bringing you the smart fans' perspective on our boys in blue. I'm Vince Samperio, Chavez Ravine Fiends, and today I will be rolling solo dolo. Uh, just been had, had a couple of solo episodes recently, so I decided to give them one back. And I am going to be talking about the Dodgers' win over the Rockies, a couple of roster updates, a little bit on Alex Vestia and the Dodgers bullpen as a whole, and then just getting into trying to find out how the Giants keep doing this. Uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. But before, a quick reminder to subscribe or follow Locked On Dodgers wherever you get your podcasts and to subscribe on YouTube so you can see our wonderful faces every morning that accompanies the audio that you're used to hearing. Uh, but let's get right into it. Dodgers, they win. They win 5-4 in 10 innings. Another extra inning win for the Dodgers after struggling so hard here in the early parts of the regular season. Um, not an ugly win, and I, I did tweet yesterday, they don't all have to be pretty. This was definitely by no means a, a pretty win. The Dodgers did you know, take the lead at one point. Julio didn't quite have everything. He ended up giving up four runs, but the bullpen came in and did their job. It was a lineup that featured Luke Rayleigh because Cody Bellinger, who we know had a rib fracture when he bumped into Gavin Lux the other day, he ended up going on the injured list. Luke Rayleigh got called up, was in the starting lineup, did contribute a base hit and scored a run. So it wasn't completely uh, useless at the plate as we've, as we've kind of seen him so far this season. So that's ideal. Um, but yeah, it was Albert Pujols had the game winning RBI, a little base hit up the middle, which is interesting because not a lot, of, not a lot of guys get base hits up the middle these days, but Albert Pujols doesn't, they don't shift on him too extreme. So he's still able to find the, the little CNI singles up the middle. Uh, Gavin Lux scored in the extra inning and then Bruce Dark Gratterall and Alex Vesia closed out the win. Alex Vesia notching his first career save. We're going to talk a little bit more about him in the next segment. But just one of those games where, yeah, extra inning game. Obviously, the games the Dodgers weren't winning in the first half of the season. They've they've really turned it around here in extra inning games. I believe they're four and one in their last five, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, one run games. They've really turned around their their record in one run games. They're close to 500 or over 500 after this victory. So that's a good sign. Um, but just one of those, yeah, just an ugly game. It wasn't even an ugly cruise game, like a 10, 11, and nine, like 11, 10, 10, 9, whatever the case is. 5-4, uh, just Dodgers, Sensatella has the Dodgers number the last two times he's faced them, and the Dodgers weren't able to scratch anything out against the bullpen either until the one single for Pujols in the 10th inning. Um, but, yeah, it, 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 a win is a win. The Giants ended up winning. They took the lead late against the Padres, and we'll talk more about them in later segment as well. Just a couple of notes from around the Dodgers. Like I mentioned, Cody Bellinger on the injured list, uh, Dave Roberts, didn't really know how long he's going to be on there, if he'll be back this season, whatever the case is. It seemed like the other day he was going to be fine, and now he's on the injured list. So we'll see what happens. Mookie Betts got the start in center, something we talked about last night where maybe they didn't want him to play center field, uh, but now he's playing center field kind of out of necessity. I would imagine Chris Taylor gets back in the lineup if he's all good with his next stuff, and maybe he'll be out there in center field. They could throw Lux out there in center field. You know, he played center field with OKC, and he kind of talked about how he's more comfortable in the outfield. He didn't kind of misplay one ball out there in left field, but it was a, one of the, the harder balls kind of right at him over his head, line drive, and hopefully he'll he'll learn from that. A couple other things. Tony Gonson will get to start on Friday. The Dodgers will push back everyone else. Uh, Clint Kershaw will start on Saturday, so everyone will get that 
that extra day of rest here with the Dodgers going with a full five-man rotation, even with the day off. The Dodgers are currently one game back with 11 to play, and it's one of those things where I guess the playoffs have started kind of for the Dodgers, not necessarily, you know, they're they're already guaranteed a playoff berth. Uh, at the very least, they will be playing a one-game wild card. There's just so much here, and, and it feels like the Dodgers are kind of in the playoffs where we're, you know, maybe some of us are out here living and dying with every pitch in a game against the Rockies at Coors Field. That's kind of how it felt. Giants Padres were started playing a little bit after the Dodgers and a lot of people were, were clearly watching both games as I could see from my Twitter timeline. So it's one of those where we're scoreboard watching as fans we're watching and living and dying with every pitch. And even though the Dodgers have that playoff berth secured, I think we'd all be a little more comfortable if an NLDS berth is secured with them winning the NOS for the ninth time in a row. It's just one of those things where at this point, I, at first, with with the way things were going, uh, it was one of those where, yeah, we need the Giants to lose and we need the Dodgers to win. I think I'm at a point now where as long as the Dodgers keep winning, I have a feeling things will work out. Obviously, if they win out the rest of the way, that'll make it really hard on the Giants to keep pace with them. Uh, but I'm at the point now with the Dodgers, the way, the, the way they have the rest of the way set up, with the Rockies, with the D-backs, with the Padres, and then the Brewers. The Brewers not really playing for anything, so they might be able to – they might be resting guys in terms of not throwing a full seven innings, maybe holding guys to four or five innings, just getting them ready for the postseason. You know, maybe not join, throwing a Josh Hader, Devin Williams, uh, multiple innings or multiple days in that series. So I'm all on board with Dodgers keep winning. I'm not going to worry too much about the Giants. I'm still going to be watching and tweeting about them, but I will – Hope that that you know the better team ends up prevailing, which is the Dodgers are the better team. They're still the favorites in a lot of betting odds for the World Series. They're even some. They're even the favorites for some for the NL West in terms of betting odds. So it's one of those things where people know the Dodgers are the better team, but the Giants are are, are the more steady team, and that's kind of how they've gotten here to this point. Um, but I don't want to I don't want to belabor the Giants' point too much right here in this first because we are going to talk a little bit about them later, but. That's all I got for this first segment. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about Alex Vesia. We're going to talk about the bullpen as a whole and just kind of how they've turned the season around here in the second half and really been the reason, the whole pitching staff as a whole has been the reason the Dodgers have been able to keep pace with the Giants and be one of the best teams and have the second best record in all of baseball. So make sure you keep it locked on Dodgers. This episode is brought to you by Green Room. Spotify Green Room is the first social audio platform made for sports fans. The app is free to download on iOS devices. And once you're in, you can talk with us, other fans, athletes, and insiders in real time about your favorite team or sport. We host a Locked On Dodgers room in Spotify Green Room once a week. And you can join in on the conversation you listen to here every day. You have a chance to chat with us every single week. You can create your own rooms. You can have watch parties, debates, post-game breakdowns, or react to big news or rumors. Whatever you want to do, Green Room is not just for us, but it's also for you. It's a perfect place to start to join conversations about the Dodgers, about MLB, or about anything you really want. So go download the free Green Room app now, currently available on all iOS devices. Create a profile, link your Twitter, do all that stuff. Follow Snydog on there. He's usually the one that that runs the rooms that we run every week and you can you know, join in on conversations. They might not be on the podcast anymore now that we switch to YouTube, but you can still talk with us and give us your ideas and thoughts and everything else. So go download Spotify green room today and join in on the action Spotify green room. Yeah. Get in on the action, uh, changing the way we talk sports can also go to bet online because bet online is back and better than ever as i start turning to the gridiron with teams back starting another football season bet online is your number one spot for all the pro and college sports all the betting you can think of all the odds props and contests are on the new website betonline.ag and it's the number one source for everything football head to betonline.ag today on your laptop or mobile device sign up with the promo code NFL100 and get a 100% welcome bonus that's double your initial deposit just for signing up from baseball football basketball boxing right to your favorite Vegas casino games don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season bet online is the fastest and easiest way to talk sports bet online is also the 
online sportsbook experts. So make sure to go check them out. All right. Uh, yeah, the ads on this when you're running solo are a little bit tougher. So props to Jeff for running this so far. But we're back. We're going to talk about Alex Vesia first and foremost and just the Dodgers bullpen as a whole. Alex Vesia, not his first career save. And, you know, we've talked about him a lot, but it, it's really kind of wild how valuable he's been to the Dodgers, especially here in the second half. In the second half, Alex Vesia is worth 0.6 war in Fangraph's uh, F war. And he's only behind Scherzer, Bueller, Julio, and Trinan. Scherzer, Bueller, Julio, obviously, because they're all starting pitchers. But in terms of value here in the second half, Blake Trinan and Alex Vesia have been the two most valuable Dodger relievers. And that's couldn't be more true, not just by the numbers, but just how it is. Obviously, Kenley Jansen is important. Uh, you know, Joe Kelly, Ruzar Gratterall, all these guys that have been getting big innings are important. But Alex Vesia has emerged as the Dodgers' top left-handed reliever when there really isn't any other options behind him. Victor Gonzalez struggled all year. He's down in AAA. David Price hasn't really shown that he can, you know, do stuff in, in one or two inning spurts. He hasn't necessarily been overpowering. And, uh, you know, the Dodgers have, haven't really used him in that role yet. Maybe they will here in the next few weeks to try to see if they need a second left-hander out of the bullpen or, or what they're going to do for the playoffs. Uh, but the fact of the matter is Alex Vesia is the left-hander and he is that guy and he's getting outs. And and regardless of, of how he's getting those outs, I know he throws a lot of fastballs down the middle. The last out that he got in the game last night was on a fastball down the middle, but just the way he's throwing, the way he's going, it, it's one of those things where it's really good to see. Um, here in the second half, I mean, he's thrown the fourth most games for the Dodgers in, out of the bullpen. He has a 1.14 ERA. He's over, outperforming his FIP a little bit with 2.78, but he's still out there getting outs. And at this point, I don't care how they get the outs as long as they get the outs. And Alex Vesey is one of those guys getting the outs. So props to him. I'm sure he might have a few more career saves here. Maybe this season, or at least in the near future, for the Dodgers, and that Dylan Floro Alex Vesia trait that a lot of people were—I don't think we ever really said anything because we knew that the team control was more important. And, and Dylan Floro, while he was good, wasn't necessarily a game changer. Uh, Alex Vesia has proven to be a game changer at least this season, and maybe this is going to be a theme for the Dodgers, where a left-handed reliever just kind of emerges every year. Hopefully, you would expect. Gonzalez to, to rebound next year and be good and Vesia to remain good into the next season, but you just never know. And I'm glad that Alex Vesia is the guy this year, but it, it also kind of leads to the conversation of just the Dodgers bullpen as a whole. Obviously we know all the bullpen games they've been throwing. They've been throwing a lot of innings. Um, but ever since Kenley Jansen's meltdown back in the beginning, right after the all-star break, there's not too many meltdowns that you remember from the Dodgers bullpen. And, and, and last night was, was proof of that. It wasn't pretty. Joe Kelly allowed a couple runners on. Kelly Jansen allowed the runner in scoring position to reach. Even Blake, Blake Trinan wasn't as quite as sharp as he usually is, but, you know, they all got the outs. They all were the reason the Dodgers won because the, Julio gave up four runs, the bullpen gave up none, and even in an extra inning, you know, they took care of business. And that's kind of what the Dodgers bullpen has been doing here in the second half. They have a 2.78 ERA in the second half after having a 3.53 ERA in the first half of the season. In the second half of the season, they're only second to the Giants in terms of ERA, which makes a lot of sense since those are the two more successful teams here in the second half of baseball. And I was trying to get into the numbers, seeing why. Strikeout rate was very similar. Their, you know, BABIP and, and things of that nature, bad luck, were, were very similar and even though these numbers are, are a little bit similar, a 1% difference is really all you can, you know, really is one thing that you need to be a lot better than you were. And, and that difference comes in walk rate. The first half, Dodger pitchers were walking 10.8% of, of batters. And here in the second half, 9.9% you know, of batters, which means basically kind of like one less walk a game, essentially, um, if you're going by innings. But I think that's the biggest thing and kind of what we've seen Jansen still has command issues sometimes, but his walk rates even lower than it was before. I, I don't, there's not too many times I remember Jansen walking somebody. I know he walked somebody last night, uh, but he's been pretty good with command. And then they obviously the first half too. Oh, now Alex Vesia contributed to that, to that 10.8% walk rate. He was walking a lot of guys in the short term. He was there. And you just remember, I feel like I remember a lot more games there in the first half where the Dodgers bullpen, gave up a walk, 
maybe didn't even let up another hit, but gave up a walk, maybe a stolen base, ground ball moves around at third, and then sack fly or, or whatever the case is. And now they're not really giving those free passes. Um, and even some of these hits they're giving up are a little bit lucky sometimes, especially out Blake Trinan. But they have really shut it down in terms of not allowing as many walks, and they've really shut it down in terms of getting out. And now obviously – I'm saying obviously a lot, uh, but the big part of it too is also health. You know, Blake, Blake Trinan has been healthy, but Corey Knievel came back. He's been pretty good here in the second half. Alex Vesia, not health wise, but figured something out there down in, in AAA and came back and has been really good. And they haven't had guys like random 40 man roster guys that keep getting added. They've had those guys come in and, and rotate in and out of, of, the pitching staff, but they haven't been throwing like too many key innings. The Dodgers have had Kenley Jansen, Blake Trinan, Corey Kniebel, Alex Vesia, Phil Bickford. Those guys have been pitching all the big innings here in the second half. And those guys are, are at this point right now, legitimate major league relievers. And that's more than you can really ask for. I was reading an article um, about the Giants earlier, or well, about Dodgers and Giants, just kind of going back and forth between some of the athletic writers and they kind of mentioned that the you know the, while the Giants are steady, it's because they basically just have major league talent at every position. Where up and down the order, they just have guys that are major league talent. They may not necessarily be all star talent, but they're major league talent. Same thing with their bullpen; they have a lot of guys with major league talent. Not some of these four A guys, or maybe some guys that are getting called up just because of injury and maybe not as good. And I think that's where the Dodgers are at right now. They have a lot of major league guys here in the bullpen and you're seeing the results. I mean, even Gratterall thrown into the fire last night, he was able to get a couple outs and, and help preserve that win. And, and then like I said, Vesia, Bigford, all these guys are, are big league pitchers and pitching like big league pitchers. And really the reason the Dodgers are kind of balling here in the second half and, and starting pitching is a big part of it as well. We, we've talked about that. Max Scherzer has been amazing since coming over. Julio and Bueller have been very solid the whole season. Clayton Kershaw comebacks from injury look really good. Tony Glanson's looked pretty decent. Even David Price and his stance was, was decent enough as a, as a starter, giving the Dodgers some kind of length. Uh, but it's really been the bullpen that's been carrying them beyond that. And it, it's a fun sight to see. And, and, and we've talked about how the bullpen's going to look when it comes to October. And, and it's exciting. And, and this Dodgers team as a whole is exciting to see in October, which is why the wild card game is so scary. And we're, we're probably going to say this every episode. I'm probably going to say this every episode, but that's just the way it is. The Dodgers are built for depth right now. They're built for a series. When they're throwing Scherzer, Bueller, Julio, and Kershaw at you, along with this bullpen that's been the second best bullpen in all the baseball in the second half, that's a lot to come at you. And, and even though the offense have struggled in terms of being consistent, uh, when they can score runs in bunches, I mean, it, it's just ball game, game over from there. Now, would I like to see the offense score a little more here these last couple weeks? Yes, of course. But, you know, with the Dodgers pitching the way it is, I think they're going to be just fine in terms of getting through the rest of this regular season. And it's a big shout out to the bullpen. And, and the bullpen has been, not always been a strength for the Dodgers, but this year you can legitimately say it's one of their strengths heading into October and could be another reason why they take home a second straight World Series trophy. So we'll just have to wait and see how that goes. Uh, but I'm going to come back, talk a little bit about the Dodgers and Giants and just you know how this season's going and how it feels like it is, but the numbers don't necessarily show that it's like that. So it's just a weird season. Uh, so make sure to keep it locked on, Dodgers. Built Bar, the best tasting protein bars. If you don't know it by now, I need you to go try Built Bars because they're just, they're great. And, and we just got another shipment actually from Built Bar and it's called Cookie Dough Chunk. Um, and I haven't tried it yet, but it looks really good. It sounds really good. It has real pieces of cookie dough in it. But guess what? It has real pieces of cookie dough. So you know it's going to taste great because the cookie dough is amazing. But it's going to be good for you. It's going to be under under 180 calories. It's going to have the protein. It's going to have the fiber. It's not going to have too much sugar and not going to have too much carbs. And it's going to be great tasting. How many protein bars can you say taste great with a straight face? You might think it tastes great. You might think that it's not chalky. You might think that, I don't know. The, I've had a lot of protein bars in life and not by choice, just kind of, I need something to snack on when I used to be in, in some of my old work offices and I would grab stuff and they weren't good. And built bars are good. And built bars, I bought my own money. Built bars are 
yeah, like I said, whatever you're looking for out of a protein bar, Built Bar's got it for you. Whatever kind of diet or, or lifestyle you're trying to live, Built Bar's for you. And it's honestly, you know, I'm getting a little bit tired of telling you guys because it's just so great. I'm not going to get tired of telling you guys because it is so great. But I'm getting tired of telling you guys if you haven't tried it. If you haven't tried it, I'm getting tired of telling you. Go try it. So go today. Go to Built.com. Use the promo code LOCK15 and you'll get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Now let me paint a scenario for you. You have the Dodger game on your main TV and you're trying to watch the Giant game on another device and you're trying to watch a TV show or, or maybe something else on another device. You have your neighbor's best friends log in for the other stuff because you're already logged into too many things. And it, it's just all a mess. Well, I'm here to tell you there's a way to get your TV together, and it's called Direct TV Stream. And it's a simple way to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle. Direct TV Stream brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com to learn more about Direct TV Stream. Compatible device required content varies by package. All right, let's get into this last segment. And so the Giants won. Uh, the Padres were up early in the game. They hit a few home runs. They knocked Kevin Gosman around. And then Joe Musgrove kind of fell apart in the fifth or sixth inning or both of those innings. And then the Giants scored the go-ahead run in the top of the ninth. And it just got me thinking because in that top of the ninth, I don't think any of the three singles the Giants hit were over 80 miles an hour. I think they were all 80 or less. The one by Lamont Wade Jr., who's one of the more annoying Giants at this point. Uh, he hit one just out of the outstretched hands and glove of Fernando Tatis Jr. Fernando Tatis Jr., just real quick, bro, time, you know, you don't always have to make the spectacular play. I think he was trying to make a spectacular play, misread the ball a little bit, jumped a little early, and the ball went right over him, where I think he could have taken a few more, a couple more steps back and then jumped, and he would have caught it rather easily. But I'm not a major league player, and, you know, I wasn't there. So, but I'm, I'm just saying that's what it looked like. And, you know, you don't always have to make the, the amazing play. Let's just make the good play, the out play. Uh, and then Manny Machado comes up with two on where, where you thought some reverse magic was going to happen because Brandon Crawford made an air. There's a little chopper single and you're like, okay, maybe something's going to happen. And then Fernando Tachi Jr. Strikes out looking on a pitch that was, was, it was a strike. It was a very good pitch by Rogers, the, the, the giant sidearm submarine guy, but probably should have flown the bat. And then Manny Machado, I tweeted that he's either going to win the game. He had two home runs. And almost hit a third one earlier in the game. Um, I said, he's either going to win the game or he's either going to hit into a double play. What does he do? He hits one, 112 off the bat to a perfectly placed Brandon Belt, of course, who bobbled it, but still had the time to turn to throw into Crawford, Crawford throwing to Rogers, 3 6 1 double play, end of game. So it got me thinking, like, you know, the Giants got to be like lucky, right? And, and yes, they've won some games. With a little bit of luck, you know, Mike Talkman, Robbie, and Albert Pujols, good play by him, but also a little lucky for everything that happened. You know, the ball to go where it went, no fans to be there at the time who, who could have maybe helped the Dodgers and, and caught the ball, uh, the ball staying in his glove, you know, all those types of things. But even if you take that one away, you know, the Dodgers, Sheldon Noisy not stretching at second base. That's a little bit lucky and, and a bad move by the Dodgers, obviously, by Noisy, but a little bit of luck. Um, Avisel Garcia dropping a ball out there in the outfield, one of the games against the Brewers, and the Giants end up winning that. You know, that's lucky. Uh, not calling Darren Ruff ending the one game against Dodgers, then not calling uh, strike three on a, on a check swing. That's that's lucky. But when I look at the numbers, they're not necessarily that lucky in terms of, at least when the numbers I looked up, I, I didn't look up, you know, I could have went into crazy detail, but Everything I kind of looked at, it was just surprising where the Dodgers had either better luck or better numbers. Um, so you look at, at BABIP, which is, you know, batting average on balls in play. The Giants are at 294 for the season. The Dodgers are at 285. So, yeah, there's a little bit of luck differential there. Then you go to, to BABIP with runners in scoring position, and the Dodgers have actually been 
not luckier. Well, I guess luckier in that sense. Uh, but they probably hit the ball better. They're hitting 302, and the Giants are hitting 291 with runners scoring position bad bit. So then I'm like, okay, well, the Giants must strike out less, and that's why, you know, all these balls in play that they hit, all these 70 mile an hour ground balls that find holes. The Dodgers must, they, the Giants must strike out less than the Dodgers. The Giants strike out more than the Dodgers. They have a 23.9 strikeout percentage. Dodgers have a 22.9 strikeout percentage. I'm like, okay, well, runners in scoring position. The Giants probably just strike out less than the Dodgers do because, you know, the, that's how they get these lucky hits. Run around second, a little C9 single or a little blooper that gets right over Tatis's glove. Um, and if you, you make contact, you have more chance of that happening. If you don't make contact, that can't really happen if you're striking out. But no, runners in scoring position, the Giants have a 23.1% strikeout rate. The Dodgers have a 21.6% strikeout rate. So I don't know what it is. Obviously, the 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 luck – Stands out a lot more because the Dodgers are chasing the Giants because some of those happen against the Dodgers. I mean, Will Smith having to play first base, not so much luck. That was just one of those games where a lot of stuff happened. Uh, but almost any other first baseman maybe makes that play. I'm not entirely sure. Can't say that for sure, but possible. And yeah, I don't know. The Giants and Dodgers are just so evenly matched at this point. 10-9 season series. A lot of those games could have went either way. Although it does feel like a lot of those games could have went the Dodgers way with just a couple of things here and there. And then we just think, like I said, the, the Brewers won the one let yesterday with, with all those things. We, we've seen a lot of little bleeders and bloopers and we've seen this from the giants in previous years. And like I said, you think about it. Okay. Well, they're, they just don't strike out as much. So they make more contact and they get a little bit luckier in that sense. And the numbers don't necessarily reflect that. Now, if we got more nitty gritty, maybe Babbitt, um, with runners in scoring position and high leverage situations. I, I want to say I looked that up and it, it still showed the kind of the same thing. The Dodgers and Giants rather very similar. Or the Dodgers were slightly ahead. So I don't know, man. It, it's it's frustrating. Obviously, the Dodgers have been playing lights out here in the second half, especially since August, and they've hardly really gained any any games with in any other division with any other team. They would have picked up at least five, six games on them and been somewhat comfortably in the lead three or four games ahead with 11 to play. Uh, but instead, they're one game back still. And and the other part of this, too, is like when they played straight up, this is why I said it was important for the Dodgers to win because you don't have to worry about anyone else. Had the Dodgers taken care of business, they would at least be tied right now with the Giants if they had won that, that last series in San Francisco. And, yes, while Will Smith at first base was, was not great, you know, Walker Buehler – just didn't have it that day. The Dodgers weren't able to to win that game. And, and that proved to be the difference because it's the latest game between them. But as I mentioned, there was a lot of other games between them. But now you're counting on a, a struggling Padres team. You're going to count, I think, on the Rockies and D-backs here in the last 11 games. And like I mentioned earlier, I still believe the Dodgers keep winning. The Giants are going to lose. They're not going to go 11-0 and the rest of the way. The Dodgers could go 11-0 and the rest of the way, and I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, at this point, I guess if the Giants won 11 I wouldn't be surprised, but I, I would, wouldn't be surprised because, like, yeah, that's how, of course, that's how it's going to happen. But in terms of reality, I would be a little bit surprised. They, they, like I said, they're a good team, but they're running out of gas. I mean, they have Logan Webb, who's been really good. Gosman's been hit or miss here in the second half and, and more missed than hit. Uh, Alex Wood just came off the COVID IL, but he's still probably trying to build his way back up. And then Di Sclafani has been okay, cool, whatever. It's just... I don't know. It, it just – obviously, we've seen why. They, ha they have a, the only lower ERA from bullpen than the Dodgers, but it's just one of those things where it just feels like everything's going their way, and hopefully it doesn't stay that way. I, I don't think it will stay that way, even if things bounce their way the rest of the way here in the regular season and they do end up locking up the NL West. I can't see that being sustained in the playoff series. Now, obviously, we've seen it before. We've seen them win – with lesser teams, we've seen them win with wildcard teams, but I don't think it's going to be hard to beat the Dodgers and the Brewers, who are significantly better in terms of starting pitching. And even if everything else lines up, starting pitching becomes a little bit more important in October in terms of if you have good starting pitching, it's a big thing. Obviously, we saw that with the Nationals a couple years ago against the Dodgers and, and in that 2019 playoffs. We've seen it even with the Dodgers, Walker Bueller. Clayton Kershaw were really good last year. They they 
were able to, you know, keep the Dodgers in games or push the Dodgers in games that they needed to be pushed. And, and it's a big, it's a big miss. And if you're heading into a postseason series with one legit starter and you're kind of hoping from the rest of the other guys, uh, it's not necessarily a recipe for success. You do have the off days built in where you can get away with using your bullpen a little more than you want. Uh, but you're going to need some of those guys to step up and throw multiple innings. And the Giants don't have too many swing guys like that that can throw those multiple innings or, you know, the horses in, in the rotation. I don't see Logan Webb being Madison Bumgarner and coming and throwing, you know, three innings in relief or whatever in a, in a postseason series. It might happen, but I, I just can't see it happening. Uh, but we, we're just going to have to the live and die with these next 11 games and see what happens. I have faith in Dodgers that they're going to win a lot of those 11 games. And I'm kind of flipped a little bit where before I was like, oh, Giants are going to win division. It's kind of inevitable at this point. Dodgers cut it to one game, one game with 11 to go. I got confidence in the Dodgers going at least 9-2 and two in these 11. That means the Giants have to go 8-3. and three. And 8-3 and three is still good, but that would be at least a tie. And I'm, I'm going to take Max Scherzer on the mound over whoever the Giants put out there and the one game playoff if it goes game 163. So we're just have to wait and see. And, uh, you know, hopefully the Padres can help us out here in the next, you know, they can go five, win five against the Giants, the next five, and then lose three against the Dodgers. And thank you because their, their time is up in, in, in terms of postseason. The Cardinals won their 10th in a row. I think they're five games up in the last call on both the Padres and Reds at this point. So, yeah, the Padres playoff pictures all but gone. Uh, a sad story uh, for them and their fans, but we'll see what happens. Uh, we're just going to have to wait it out. And and that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for uh, sticking around as I kind of struggled here and there for these, uh, for this first solo episode here on YouTube. There's a lot of other things to click and a lot of other things to be aware of. And uh, I promise I'll, I'll, I'll get it going. It's, it's, it's a lot easier with, with both of us, but now that we're kind of on YouTube, it's a, a lot easier harder for us to always be on one and one so we're just gonna have to run it this way for now but that that's fine with me uh that's gonna do it for today's episode thank you all for listening make sure to follow or subscribe wherever you get your podcast make sure to subscribe to locked on dodgers on youtube make sure to tell your friends and family to do that as well get our numbers up i believe we're over 200 subscribers now so rolling strong but uh you know let's get over 300 400 500 let's get it to a thousand you know let's just let's just go crazy um, you can follow us on social media, Locked On Dodgers on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow Jeff on Twitter at Snydog. You can follow me at Vince Samperio. Uh, go check out uh, Snydog or Locked On Dodgers. We're giving something away, and and it, you don't have to be a follower, or subscriber. But the more subscribers and followers we get, the more we can give away. Jeff has a lot of stuff to give away, so let's go do that. If you want to get a hold of us, you can always send us an email, lockdowndodgers at gmail.com. You can send DMs to any of those accounts I mentioned earlier. You can call leave a voicemail at 323-863-LOCK. That's 5625. And that's all the ways to get a hold of us. Uh, we're here every weekday morning, and we hope you'll be with us when you get in your car or if you're at home. Tell your smart device play podcast, Locked On Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. Have a good one. Betting on baseball doesn't have to be a guessing game if you listen to the Locked On Bets podcast hosted by your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling. Go check out their page. Go check out Locked On Bets. They've been winning a lot in their locks here in the last few months, and uh, you need to follow them. Get daily picks, ball specials, wrong team favorite picks, and Lee Sterling's lock of the day. Follow the Locked On Bets podcast brought to you by betonline.ag, wherever you get podcasts.